main entrance to the Indonesian hospital, one of northern Gaza's largest healthcare facilities now in ruins. Overwhelmed with the number of wounded and facing a severe shortage of medical supplies, corridors have become wards and surgeons operate on the floor. After Israeli tanks and snipers laid siege to the hospital for days, troops raided it in the early hours of Friday morning before the ceasefire came into effect. We told them we are civilians, we have children and sick people, we are nurses, when they stormed the hospital through the main entrance. They interrogated me with three other nurses. They asked me if there is anyone from the resistance here. They asked me about the entrances and the exits of the hospital. We were all panicking and very scared. The hospital has been out of service for weeks. With the extent of the damage, it's not clear whether it will ever reopen. Witnesses recall the horror of Israeli soldiers' interrogation. The fourth floor of the hospital was targeted with a missile. They also cut off electricity and solar power. We had 25 people with broken pelvis who can't be moved. They detonated this entrance. They shot the patients inside the building. They searched us one by one and scanned everyone's faces. While interrogating me, I told them that I am a nurse. They took me to this corner and beat me and asked me so many questions about the hospital, the Israeli captives and hostages, if I know anything about them. Every question was accompanied by a slap. After that they left, we could have gone, but I promised Allah that I will never leave my patients here alone and that I will be the last one to leave this hospital. The Committee to Protect Journalists says at least 48 Palestinian journalists have been killed by Israeli fire. Anas al-Sharif is among the few risking their lives to tell the world what is happening in northern Gaza. The occupation forces have damaged and destroyed big parts of the hospital. There's been major destruction here in the hospital. Even equipment and supplies have been ruined by occupation forces. U.S. media report the Biden administration had been concerned by the ceasefire because it would allow journalists greater access to Gaza, which would, they say, expose the devastation and possibly turn public opinion against Israel. The stench of death forces people to cover their nose. Charred, decomposing bodies, children among them, are piled up in one corner. No burials have taken place because Israeli snipers targeted anyone who ventured out to dig a grave. Streets, schools, houses, shops. Israeli strikes have destroyed them all. After seven weeks in hiding, people are finally able to go outdoors. But with the entire neighborhoods razed to the ground, hundreds of thousands of Palestinians have no homes left. Sama bin Javed, Al Jazeera. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to get the latest news from Al Jazeera.